Hang on, we're just getting ready to go live up on 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 YouTube. So says it started. It's streaming. Okay, we are up on YouTube. So hang on, we're just getting ready to go live up on 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 YouTube. Oh, so that's, that's not obnoxious at all. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna close that down. I'm gonna to try to find you guys back on Zoom again. Close this down, close this. Here we go on this. We are gonna hit the record button. We're gonna record on this computer. Here we go. Bruce is gonna help us. Bruce uh, Waterman, by the way, uh, is in the upper right corner here, you guys. Bruce is an amazing, uh, amazing individual. He is kind of our production guy. Um, and I, and that almost doesn't do him anywhere close to justice. He is, uh, the guy you want on your team. He's one of my closest friends. Uh, we travel the world together and he really controls and keeps in line and organized anything technical that can exist. So he's going to, he's going to help us out. He also has a brand new business that I am super excited to share with many people that, um, if you happen to use the service mailbox power, Bruce is the mailbox wizard and can help you set your accounts up, get your account set up, build campaigns, build projects, build everything, you know, anything that you need as it relates to a mailbox power account, um, uh, he can help you with. So uh, shout out to Bruce. Bruce, I appreciate you and thank you. And uh, looking forward to seeing you in the wizard robe and the hat and the magic wand that you're going to get. And if you haven't got it yet, um, keep checking your mailbox. So you guys, I am super excited to talk to you today about social media. As Ryan said a little bit before we started the recording, uh, I live in Los Angeles, California. Again, my name is Casey Eberhardt, and we run a bunch of meetup groups. And tonight we are talking social media. And the reason that I think social media is so powerful is right now where we are in the world today, um, social media can be, if you allow it, to not be a rabbit hole and a time suck and all those negative things we say about social media, it really can be literally an ATM or a virtual cash machine for your business. And so tonight we're gonna rock through this and talk a little bit about social media. At the end, we'll open it up for questions and we'll have a conversation. We'll come back all together and have a blast uh, being able to talk social media. So with that, Ryan, uh, you're with me. So what I'm going to do is I am going to share my screen and we are going to uh, rock and roll this thing. Okay. So let's see. There we go. We got a view. Let's do the slideshow. Okay. So uh, Bruce, you, you have me all set up, right? So you're going to pin Ryan and I. Is that the story, Morning Glory? You're both pinned. Okay. Awesome. I get to see you and Gail as well on my, on my end. So. We are going to rock and roll, and we're just going to have a conversation about social media and how it uses it in your business. Now, I'm also going to tell you, uh, let me just be fully transparent. There's nothing to buy. We're not going to do some offer at the end. The worst thing we're going to do is we're going to invite you to join us in a Facebook group. So I, I don't want you to think that this is like leading up to some kind of sales pitch or some kind of um, anything other than it's our way of giving back. Um, and hopefully it gives you some ideas on how you can help grow your business using social media. And we do have a workshop coming up that's free to attend that we have a link at the end if you want to join us that, that'll uh, kind of help you uh, take what you learned today and move it to the next level. Okay. So with that, here we go. Listen, here's the scoop. Billions and billions of people visit social media websites each and every day. Billions of people. Now, the one thing that I want to be able to kind of start this out with when it talks about billions of people using social media, um, every single person on this webinar today or watching this is here because of social media. You were either here because of Meetup or you were here because of YouTube or you were here because of Facebook or Instagram, some social media thing. A lot of people, a lot of business owners have not yet figured out how to actually make social media work for them. They use it as a distraction or they use it to stay, quote, busy. Um, and at the end of the day, it can be a really, really powerful tool because it levels the playing field and allows you access to billions of people each and every day. It's the most powerful way to grow your business. And like Ryan said before, uh, before we got started here, um, I have uh, been very fortunate that I have studied and I've watched and I've looked and I've learned and I've tried new things and I failed probably more than 
uh, many, many people, but I have really sort of helped craft and create a business using the platform of social media. And, and, and I would say, honestly, probably 90% of all of my business income comes as a way and um, of direct from social media. OK, so any any of the businesses that we buy or that we take over, that we work with, we consult or whatever, all really uses social media as a powerful tool because it gives us access to literally billions of people. It allows you to bring in new people into your business, the lifeblood of any business around our new customers. And if you are not having access to those customers when they have a problem, it's very difficult for you to solve said problem. At the end of the day, we all as consumers, um, we really only buy one thing. So tonight, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of try to play both sides of a fence here. I'm going to kind of tell you, uh, kind of give um, some ideas on one hand, but then I'm also going to flip us down to how we operate as people in the social media ecosystem, right? So um, here's the reality. You and I now have access to an entire world of customers that we wouldn't have otherwise. And I always joke um, it, we, behind closed doors with our team. It's like back in the 80s when I was growing up in the early 90s, like our version of social media was a bunch of kids getting on bikes and skateboards and going down to the end of the block and um, all chitter chattering and gossiping. And then we would go home when somebody like horn got honked and that signaled it was time for dinner and we all scattered. And then we all came back together the next day and talked about what happened at our houses last night. What we have for dinner? What we ride, what presents did we get? And then we scramble and go home and we come back. That was our version of social media. Now we just have access to everybody everywhere in the world when they're actually looking and talking about their problems. You can obviously get your brand um, or yourself in front of a vast, vast audience. I mean, just, just to put this a little bit in perspective, um, I, I am super, super fortunate in that I get asked to speak and train all over the world. And, you know, I've spoken in front of some of the biggest rooms on the planet, right? Um, you know, I've been in front of 20, 25,000 people in stadiums, like basketball stadiums before. And at the end of the day, that sounds really cool. And there's 20,000 people there and it's a lot of energy and all of that jazz. But at the end of the day, one video on, on YouTube, one really viral post on Facebook can be seen by 5, 10, 15 times that many people. And it can do that over and over and over again. That's really the power of what we talk about in social media. The one-on-one -on -one selling one-on-one -on -one is awesome. But when you can leverage a platform like social media and go one to many, it's massive. There are very few people in the world that understand the game of leverage better than Deborah Thorne. Deborah is on here um, as well. She literally hosts the Leverage Conference. Um, and what I love about the Leverage Conference, and Deborah, I know wherever you are, you're probably smiling right now. Um, but I love the, the ability to create an environment where one plus one equals seven. And that's really what social media has allowed us to do. It allows you to... Um, um, be positioned correctly as a thought leader in your profession. And here's the thing, you guys, the reality is um, social media um, gives people the ability positioning wise to build business around that. And I'll give you a very quick example. Um, two people being held constant, two people are up for the same job, okay? Or two consultants or, or you're selling the same thing and you're up against two people, two people um, are, 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 are trying to sell to the same person. That person, all that person does goes to social media. One person is positioned as a leader and a thought leader in their profession. The other person has, you know, 12 friends or they don't think that Instagram is important or they don't care about Facebook. Who gets the job? It's the person that has the profile, that has the audience, that has the network already 100% of the time, okay? So this raises some important questions. What's the best platform to use? What tactics should you use to be seen by the most people? How are there certain types of, are there certain types of content? And we'll talk about that to perform better than others. How can you um, regularly post content? We're going to talk a little bit about that. And what rules do we need to follow? Okay. In order to build your business through social media, it is very, very important to have an actual strategy. Okay. And, and, just as a guy that, that trains networking and social media all the time, what I can tell you is 99.999% of people and businesses and brands 
do not have an actual planned out strategy. That is great news for people like you that can put a strategy in place. Just a teeny, teeny, tiny bit of strategy puts you in a category where most people won't play. Most people will say things like, oh, well, I don't go on social media because it's just religion and politics. Or, ah, oh, you know what, it's just a time suck. Oh, I don't want to go down the rabbit hole. Okay. Well, then be on purpose and with intention backed by a strategy and none of that applies. And that's really kind of the name of the game. So without a definite plan, you're going to on social media, you're just not going to get the results. Right. So we Ryan and I hear this all the time. We work, with, we work with entrepreneurs and business owners all the time. And they're like, hey, uh, we want you guys to do our social media. That's my favorite one. Hey, Ryan, I want you to do my social media. Well, OK, well, what do you want me to do? Well, it because I don't understand it. OK, well, how about we sit down and come up with a little bit of a plan? Oh, I don't want to do that. OK, well, you're going to have a challenge because we can't even execute a plan if we don't actually have one. So it's important to think of social media um, as nothing more than a business tool. And if you can keep that in mind and create a plan, a strategy, a calendar, um, you're going to be for much further ahead than most. So we're going to discover a step-by-step -step social media strategy for building your business. I don't care what business you're in. Um, I have yet to find a business that we couldn't use social media to enhance that brand, build the brand bigger, bring on customers, acknowledge those customers, show gratitude towards those customers, ask for referrals from those customers, have those referrals and grow a network, right? So, and Ryan, anytime you want to jump in, just grab yourself off me or I'm just going to, I'm just going to keep, I'm just going to keep rocking and rolling. So number one, um, and I work with, um, I run a mastermind training accountability program called the Platinum Inner Circle. And we talk a lot about this. We have about a hundred members in that program right now, which is just friggin' awesome. Cause these are, uh, these are my babies. These businesses are all people that have really taken a step out and in front and said, Hey, we're ready to rock and roll. We get huge results, right? And one of it comes down to the very fundamental beginnings is you have to choose your platform, okay? Now, let me be really, really clear here. There is a big, 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 big difference of choosing your platform based on what you want to do or what you like to do versus where your customers are actually hanging, okay? And uh, I, I will give you a perfect example. If you were to sell or your brand sells something that's very visually stunning, right? So I work with Chris Dyer from Embellished Butterfly. She sells stunning um, em, uh, embellished like tumblers and champagne glasses and, and all kinds of things with Sarasi's crystal. The primary client for her are women. Okay, so women and bling. I hear women and bling, there's one platform that I is like a must do, and that's Pinterest. Why? Because that platform is designed primarily for, by, and about women and how you ladies uh, like to shop. It's designed by women. It's uh, curated by women. It's a great place. That platform is great if that's the type of product. If you sell financial software, LinkedIn is probably going to be your is going to be your best bet, right? So I kind of look at it like this. YouTube is a movie theater. Twitter is a bar. Facebook is a backyard barbecue. LinkedIn is an office. Clubhouse, which is the brand new one, is like the chat lines from um, our nine dollars and ninety five cents a minute back in the 80 party chat lines. Right. It's important to understand that we have to choose our platforms based on um where our customers hang okay so you need to know who your actual audience is this is critically critically important is where do they spend their time when it comes time to social media okay so here's the deal like clubhouse is a is essentially a live podcast i mean for lack of a better word if you're not familiar with clubhouse it's sort of literally like a chat line and, and you have access to a lot of people you may not have access to but it's all auditory so if you sell stuff that's primarily sold through radio, podcasts, Clubhouse is going to be your bet. Okay. If you like to show off products, 
YouTube might be the might be the best place. If you want to show like, you know, how these glasses show it up in a box or how this phone works, or you're going to demo something, uh, demonstrate something, YouTube might be a better, um, better place. Where do they interact? What sites influence how they actually purchase or what they actually purchase? Okay. And who are the biggest influencers in the space? And what do they use? Right. So, so often we, I find that um, sometimes people want to go it alone and they want to be a trailblazer and I'm going to go do things the total opposite of everybody else. I have a little bit of a different philosophy. If there is a flow of customers and a flow of people buying products, I want to be inserted into that conversation that already exists. I am not arrogant or egotistical enough to think that I can start an entire brand new conversation on a brand new platform about something that nobody knows anything about. And I'm going to be the, the, like the solid dude, right? Not really my bag. I want to find out where the customers are. I want to have a conversation with those customers about the products, goods, or services that might be able to help improve their life. And then I want to put those products in front of them, right? So we have a very three, we talk a, a, a lot about this in our Platinum Inner Circle. We have a three-step rule. Step one, build a tribe. Step two, engage the tribe. And step three, market to the tribe. Okay. So who are the influencers in your space? If you are somebody that sells, um, oh, let's see, let me make something up. If you sell surgical instruments, for example, then I would be trying to find out who is the top brand of surgical instruments and where are they talking? Are they in Facebook groups? Are they in LinkedIn groups? Are they talking to veterinarians? Are they talking to um, chiropractors? Are they talking to medical doctors? Are they talking to surgeons, whatever? Find those influencers that already have a large network and go insert yourself into their, conver into their conversation, okay? Essentially, it comes down to this. You wanna be where your audience is, okay? If you publish on platforms where they spend their time uh, or where they never spend their time, you're never going to um, engage with what you, they'll never engage with what you post. If you are trying to post funny um, cat memes in LinkedIn, you're going to struggle. Nobody, uh, I'm looking at Gail's, Gail's face right now. She's shaking her head. No, it's like, if I'm on LinkedIn, I do not want to see cats spinning in a washing machine. I'm there. My brain is designed to be in LinkedIn, checked in into a business conversation. I don't want to see, you know, the hot dog that you had at Nate's hot dog stand yesterday, right? Or the taco you had at Tito's Taco. I don't know why. Every time I see Bruce and we're in this last Los Angeles thing, I keep thinking of Tito's Tacos. If you're from LA, you know Tito's. If you're not, then you know. Okay. Um, uh, look, if you don't know where your audience spends their time, Here's a novel concept. How about you ask them? There you go. Bruce has even changed his background, right? <laughs> right? So if you don't know where your audience actually spends their time, we got to ask them. That comes down to engage the tribe, right? So if you have a group of people and you know that they are buyers for your product, good, or service, um, how about you ask them questions? Send out a poll. Ask them survey questions. If you've been part of Expand the Business um, for any length of time, we do poll questions in there probably every other day. We're just always asking, hey, what do you need help with? Hey, do you build an email list? Do you like dividends? Do you accumulate wealth? Do you understand the um, quadro, cash flow quadrant from Rich Dad Poor Dad? Like we ask tons of questions in there. Why? We want to be able to engage the audience and find out where they're actually spending their time and what are they actually talking about. Okay. Now, this is something that I don't think, uh, well, I know this just because I work with people all day long about this. Um, most people can't even tell me what type of posts have got them the biggest response. And we can talk about biggest response in terms of engagement and conversion. And conversion means somebody's actually taken out their credit card and said, yes, Bruce, I'll buy. Yes, Gail, I'll buy. Yes, Deborah. I'll buy, right? So in the world of social media, engagement is really critical. And so we want to have posts that are super, super engaging. So for example, I live on Facebook. Facebook is just my, it's just my um, social media uh, of choice, Facebook and YouTube, right? 
Reason I love YouTube is you can create a video on YouTube and it lasts forever. And people can watch in their pajamas if they want, and they can click and be at their own leisure. And so um, there are videos that, that throw off leads and cash all day long. Today, literally today, I've had two people purchase something from me um, based on YouTube videos. Two in a day, right? Um, I know that videos tend to, for me, get a lot of response. I don't know why. Maybe they think it's they, because I've got cool Disney ears here. Or they like the painting in the background or they want to know what, what these vases are. By the way, these little vases on the back, I don't share this very often, but um, uh, my grandmother sent me these. I grew up in Seattle and these uh, two vases back here are made from ash from the Mount St. Helens explosion, May 5th of 1980. Um, so uh, they sit there. That's my Tonga Hut uh, uh, cocktail glass. Anyways, doesn't really matter. What matters is what gets the most engagement for you. Are they pictures? Are they memes? Are they questions? Are they emoji laden? Are they non emoji laden? It would be really smart of you to start keeping track of what gets you the most engagement. Easy way for you to keep track of engagement, by the way, guys, um, is this start scoring your posts. Okay. The way you score your posts is go back two days after you leave it. So you could all do this when we leave this video today is go back to your social media, whichever platform, Instagram, TikTok, Clubhouse, whatever, go back two days and start scoring your posts. And the way you score it is this. If somebody likes it, you give yourself one point. If they comment, give yourself two points. And if they share it, give yourself three points. Create a document, write down what posts get over, I don't know, 100 points or 50 points. Start with whatever point total you want and start keeping track of and looking what posts are actually getting the most engagement. If you put a post up and it gets 100 likes, that's a pretty good post. You might want to put that in your bucket of, hey, this is really cool. I'll give you a little secret, guys. Um, this, is just, this is just one little strategy I do. I don't know if anybody else does it. Um, in Facebook, for example, when you go on your phone in Facebook and you go to memories, it shows you your top posts from the past 10 or 11 years or however long you've been on Facebook. So literally what I do is in the morning, I get up and I go to memories on my phone and I scroll back and I pick at least two or three posts over the past 10 years that have got a ton of engagement. I don't care whether I like the post or not. I look at what gets the engagement and I just repost it. I either just post the repicture, I might change it, I might update it, but it's a great way to always keep updating, um, updating your, uh, your, your responses. Okay. The other thing you gotta, is you gotta ask, what are you selling? Right. And now this is where I want you to put yourself in the mindset of a, uh, of customer mode. We're all customers at some point for other people, right? Ask yourself, what are, what is somebody selling and am I willing to buy it myself on social media? Okay. If you're not, probably not going to be the best thing for you to try to sell, right? So here's the thing. I'll give you an example. Um, my computer right now is sitting on a stand-up desk tripod, okay? Cost me 300 bucks. Uh, it was because I saw this thing on Instagram and I just thought it was super cool. I went on to Facebook and then I saw somebody do a review of this tripod uh, on Facebook. I was like, I love that. I think it's really cool. I like being able to have the flexibility of a stand-up desk slash a tripod. I bought it. It was 300 bucks. I didn't really care about 300 bucks. If you're selling a service, you know, I re I'm, I'm an affiliate for a lot of products and services, right? And I'm always testing, like, what, what will somebody actually buy on social media versus not? Here's what I found. This is just my, my own two cents. If somebody thinks your product is really cool, they're going to research it across multiple platforms before they purchase, right? So I'm an affiliate for a company that allows you to create um, a unique, uh, unique gifts, okay? Really unique gifts. I know that I can post something on Facebook, and most people may or may not click the link and actually join or buy or try it out or whatever. But what happens is I can say, oh, this is what I'm doing. Hey, I did a video on this. And then I can point them over to YouTube where I've done a more in-depth video that gives them more meat on the bone, if you will. And that's where I actually 
um, have way more people join. So for me personally, I like to um, get people excited on Facebook and then bring them over to YouTube where I can actually do a better job or a more in-depth explanation of what we're doing. Okay. Um, you know, it is, uh, it is, uh, it's essential that sometimes that we start thinking smaller rather than just bigger. It is um, your audience, you, uh, the closer you can get your audience all together, the better off you're going to be. So, um, for example, and I'm just, I just keep using myself because this is probably the best example, at least for me, most of my connections on social media, other than a few friends and a, some family members, my Facebook page are business people. So if I'm going to talk about how cute I think a teddy bear is, not going to be great. My, my network is built on business folks, right? My Facebook profile. And so we literally, um, every three to five months, I literally go through and I pull a report of anybody that has not engaged in my, uh, on my Facebook page and we lose them. I'm right now in the middle of, I'm dropping 150 friends a day off of Facebook. So I pulled a list. We have about 2000 people that have not interacted with my Facebook page over the last six months. We're removing them 150 people at a time. Why? Because I always want to be adding new people to the network that are closer aligned with what my product and my services are, okay? You should be doing the same, same thing. You can always fall back on Facebook. It's just the juggernaut. I mean, it's just, it's the juggernaut, right? Um, I don't know if I totally agree with this slide or not. Um, this is just at the end of the day, what matters most is not the platform you choose, but rather the one you choose and stick with it. I don't agree with this so long as, um, the platform that you're using is congruent with where your customer actually hangs out. Okay. So if your customer hangs out at a bar, I'd probably be on Twitter. If your customer hangs out at an office all day, I'd probably be playing on LinkedIn. Your customer hangs out or is, is kind of like blending that social engagement. I'd probably hang out on Facebook. Okay. Next up, we have to optimize our social media profiles. This is hugely important. So number one, select a professional username. And what you want to be able to do is try to have the same names across platforms, okay? Now, in Facebook, for example, you can do a Facebook page, you can do a Facebook profile, and you can do a Facebook group, okay? My recommendation to at least all of our clients is the profile is number one, the group is number two, and the page is number three. The reason a page is super important in terms of Facebook is you cannot market or advertise, pay for marketing um, on any of the groups or on the profiles. You must have a business page in order to boost posts, sponsor, uh, sponsor posts, um, and really start advertising um, with marketing dollars, okay? You wanna to try to keep your username the same across all your networks, right? And let me tell you, it is a bear to change, okay? So, and, I, and, and the reason I can tell you this is I'm in the middle of this right now, right? So for years, I had the brand, The Ideal Networker, okay? Email, every, you, every, every social media, if you went and looked at The Ideal Networker, you're going to probably find me. Well, that's not really the brand where we're, where we're headed. So, so we are starting to change all of that stuff over. It's really, really difficult. That's why, especially, I am begging you, if you are building some kind of network marketing or direct sales business where you don't own the company that you're representing, please, please, please don't use the company name in your usernames. I have a friend of mine um, that she was in a, a direct sales company and she used the company name and then her name, right? And uh, it just so happened it was Arbon, right? Now, I love the company Arbon. I use the Arbon product line. I love the products. But her, um, her name was Arbon and her name. And she did every social media like that. And then you know what happened? For whatever reason, she left Arbon. Now what? All of that branding, everything that she did around that, gone, right? It's why very, very, very rarely Will you hear um, the quote gurus or thought leaders really talk about an actual brand name? They will keep it very close to their chest in terms of what they do. 
right? So you'll notice, like, I don't even, I didn't even think about this just subconsciously, even though I talk about a service that did unique um, gifts, you'll notice I didn't say the company name, right? Um, and that's because if somebody's interested in that, I want them to call me. I don't want them to go Google the company name because if they go Google the company name, the likelihood that they're going to sign up or use somebody else's link goes way high, right? But if somebody wants to, wants to, um, work with me directly and they go, oh, that might sound kind of interesting. Then they can send me a private message and then we can go into that. Okay. Companies don't like that or company brand names don't like that, but um, it's just kind of what we have to do. Right. You need to use a high quality profile photo. Right. Um, this is again where I've got to give a shout out to Bruce Waterman. Um, Bruce for a long time uh, has basically taken every professional headshot of me. I have another partner of mine that, that's a photographer. So he takes some of them as well. But um, you don't want to have crappy pictures on your social media. It just looks terrible. And you have to ask yourself, would I hire me? Okay. Photo is the first thing that people look on. Obviously, you guys know that. And if you need to have a logo design, go to Fiverr or Upwork. It's easy. It's an easy place to start. Uh, my recommendation if you use Fiverr is plunk down a couple hundred bucks, get logos done by five or ten people knowing that most of them are going to suck and you're not going to be happy, but the one that you're going to love is going to come out of that. Same with Upwork, right? Another great place to, to go. Write a compelling about us section or about section. Now, different mediums and obviously different platforms give you a little bit more or less place to play. If you, for example, live and play on LinkedIn, you are crazy not to have somebody write your about section if you are not a fantastic writer. Because in LinkedIn, so much of what happens on LinkedIn is in a business context. And so what happens is if your about us section just says, uh, hi, my name's Kim and I've been doing this for 77 years and blah, blah, blah. nobody really cares. Plus what most people, where did my water go? Oh, plus what most people don't um, realize is that LinkedIn, for example, is all searchable by Google. So if, if so like, for example, my LinkedIn profile, even though I don't play on LinkedIn very much, um, I had a professional uh, writer, author, write my bio and my about section on LinkedIn. Why? Because if you were to go Google my name, it's literally like the number one or two slot that comes up, okay? Um, now, this is again, I can go both ways on this one. Um, what is it that sets you apart from everybody else? I don't know if that's all uh, necessary. I don't, think, I don't think it's completely necessary that you be somebody totally different. People are gonna buy from brands because they want the service or the tool or the product to solve their problem. Right. If you if you are, um, I don't know, you're selling to contractors and you know you're selling hammers and everybody's selling a hammer and contractors know what a hammer is and they're using a hammer and you show up and go, hey, this is a new kind of hammer. You just the glasses lens you like if it's totally different. Be, like I know that's a bad example. Sorry guys, um, it's it's not that important. But if you can offer something in addition to what your competition is doing or in addition to what everybody is doing, it's huge. I'll give you a small example. Going back to this gift and, and card platform that I use, one of the things that I tell folks that use, um, that use me or that are my customers is, hey, look, I'll actually have my onboarding team call and help get your account set up. They'll get you all ready to go. We'll rock and roll. That's the set aside from everybody else, even though the tool or the service is the same. There's a ton of people that, that, that are affiliates for the same tool. Okay. So um, you can include your links. Um, I have a couple of links on my Facebook page. Um, one of them is freecoolbook.com. Uh, if you guys want to write that down, uh, you can freecoolbook.com. It is a book called, oh, I thought I just had it here. I just had pictures taken of my house today. So, oh, so it's a book called uh, .com Secrets. It's really an underground playbook on how to build a business online by Russell Brunson. Okay. So you can get that book. It costs you a buck or maybe it's even free and you got to pay a couple of bucks for shipping. Right. But that um, that link on my Facebook page 
has lots and lots of people have clicked on that link, got value out of what they're, they're talking about and have ordered the book, right? Well, that's an affiliate link for me. So I get paid, I think it's, I think I get paid a dollar if you, if you buy the book, right? But here's the thing, remember my business, my, my, um, my Facebook profile is made up of business people. So that book, that dot-com secrets, I have it right here, you know, this dot-com secrets book speaks to my audience, which are business people. It doesn't speak to ballerinas. It doesn't speak to um, most, most of my network are not people that have W-2 jobs. Okay. So this may, it may, this may only be applicable for somebody that's in business, number one, or number two, wants to figure out how to build an online business. So it's just leveraging somebody else's somebody else's product here. Okay. Color photo. We've talked a little bit about that. Just have something done right. Um, you know, you want to have um, I, the one thing I did for my uh, Facebook banner. I should have put a, uh, an example in here, but I literally started screenshotting little snippets in Zoom chats when people said cool stuff about when I was speaking on Zooms. Um, I just, when somebody writes something nice in the chat, um, if they say Casey, comma, blah, 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 I just take a little screenshot and then I send it to the graphics team. They put, a, uh, they put it all on a page and that's what is the banner profile. It's literally social proof uh, right there on the cover profile, okay? Just to, just to interject Canva, dot com wonderful resource for anybody to go on there they literally will have like hey are you creating a facebook cover a youtube cover and you can literally just edit that um it's uh it's a great resource and i would suggest it yeah and canva is c-a-n-v-a dot com it's super cheap they've got a free version i don't even know how much it costs for the paid version um, but if you want to do qr codes um i'll tell you guys this I am building out my YouTube channel like crazy. Uh, I am not a creative guy. Ask Bruce. Bruce, like poor Bruce gets calls from me like in the middle of the night. I'm like, dude, I can't even figure this damn thing out. Whatever. Um, but uh, on my thumbnails on my YouTube channel, I literally went to Canva and I searched for YouTube thumbnails. And it gave thousands of templates. I picked one that I liked. I made Bruce give me a photo. We shoved it in there. And now literally my YouTube thumbnails are what drive video views. And it's, it's the same one each time. It's the same picture. I literally type a different name and a different, and a different date and call it a day. But it works. I like to be low tech, big check. Okay, so um, enter your contact information. It is always perplexing to me, people that are there on social media to do business and then they don't put their contact information. Like if you can't figure out how to get a hold of me based on my social media, I am doing something wrong, right? So this happened literally just today. I got an email from somebody. She's a real estate agent. Um, she saw me on YouTube, saw a video of mine on YouTube, then found my email on LinkedIn and sent me a whole, a whole email and said, hey, this is how I found you. This is my, these are my questions I have. Can you shoot me uh, an answer back? I would lose that business if my email was not available. I would lose that business if my phone number wasn't available. Okay. Now, ladies, I understand there might be some issues with creepy guys trying to check you out or even creepy girls trying to check you out. That's cool. Um, then go get, a different, uh, go get a different phone number or go set up a separate email address so you can, so you can screen that stuff. But you do want to make it as easy as possible for people to contact you. Um, if they can't contact you, they cannot buy from you. And in the world of where we day trade attention span, if, if, if you are ready to buy and you see Ryan and Ryan doesn't get back to you or he doesn't give you or the ability to buy from him immediately, here's what's going to happen. You're going to skirt and go somewhere else. And it happens like that. Literally in a split second, you're out of the equation. Right? Okay. You want to be professional. Um, can you let your hair down and be a little loose? Yeah, of course you can be authentic, but you know, I wouldn't be posting if you're selling a, a product, good or service um, that's somewhat business related. I don't know if I would be doing shirtless upside down keg stands and take pictures of it. Call me crazy. Right. The other thing, just food for thought on this be professional thing. 
Um, we'll go, this is going to go a little bit off tangent, but it is completely relevant. Here's the reality. Um, if we were all in a gallery of you, I would ask you right now, um, how many people would change who they're going to vote for based on what I post on social media? And no one would raise their hand. If I asked you how many of you would change the deity that you pray to or the church you go to or the synagogue that you go to or the um, Buddhist temple that you go to based on what I post on social media, no one would raise their hand. Here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen, nobody is going to change their opinion based on what you post on social media. But what you will do is potentially chunk out a bunch of people that won't work with you because of who you've already told people you are. Right. So I think I'm one of the only people in the world that on the last presidential election, I did not have one political post in my newsfeed, not one. I, I am I am a political junkie. I follow politics like most people follow show business. I used to produce movies. So um, for me, show business is kind of boring. Um, for me, politics is show business for ugly people. Right. So I follow it. But you're never going to know who I vote for. You're never going to know what my views are unless you're friends with me friends with me because I don't talk about that stuff on social media because the minute I say uh, I love Republicans, the Democrats hate you. The minute you say I'm a Democrat, the Republicans hate you. And we live in such a divisive country right now, um, just let's call it what it is, that you knock out about 50% no matter what. So why chunk out 50% unless you sell like political ads? I mean, you know, let's be a little bit reasonable. So how do you represent, uh, how do you want to represent yourself and your business online? Now, this is where we get into the nitty gritty. You need to create, or I would invite you to create a social media posting schedule, okay? It's a calendar. It's just a calendar. You can print it off a blank 30 day. Um, in fact, I think Kathy Baxter's on here. Kathy Baxter has a printables business on Etsy. She will probably have a calendar, um, a blank 30 day calendar up in her Etsy store that you could go download for a buck or whatever. And then just print, put on your social media calendar. Um, and start building out that strategy. So here's the deal. When you're building this social media calendar, ask yourself these questions. How often are you going to post? Now, here's the thing. This is one of the biggest questions I get asked all the time. Case, how often should I post on social media? Um, if it were up to me, Facebook allows 12 posts per hour. So I would, if I had my ideal scenario, it would be whatever 12 times 24 is. That's how many posts I would be posting on social media uh, if, if I could in an absolute ideal world. Because nobody's looking at your profile, very few people, most people are seeing it in a newsfeed. The more engagement you have, the more people are gonna see your Facebook feed because it thinks that you are more valuable to the Facebook community. What formats are you gonna use? Pictures, text, emojis, gifts. What are you gonna, what sort of content are you gonna post? And um, Here's the deal. I put this link in here on purpose. Uh, this is one you is probably a writer downer. Um, at the end of the day, this PowerPoint was purchased from this site, caseyspick.com. I spent 22 cents on this PowerPoint. Now we made a couple of small adjustments, but caseyspick.com is a site that allows you to essentially purchase a license to use somebody else's content and, and brand it as your own. It's a, it's a format called public, lab, public label rights. Um, and it is the ability for, you can, got, you, can go, you can go buy a book on your topic and put your name on it for like five bucks. Video series, email courses, emails, all kinds of stuff um, in PLR. It's huge. I never write a blog post. I very rarely create um, stuff myself because I'm not that creative. But I can certainly go yank down something and rebrand it and do it. I think this is a pretty good PowerPoint slide deck for 22 cents. Now we have we we made it massaged it a little bit, but um, for the most part, it's intact. For a quarter, can't really beat it. Okay, so you might be thinking, why do I have to map all this out in advance? Why can't I just start posting? Because it is strategic. It is strategic in what you want to do. You want to be able to continuously post and always be improving your engagement, right? So by creating it, you do most of the work by figuring out what you're going to post up front. Then you don't have to think. 
right? So with us in, in my businesses, we don't ever think what we have to post because we're out three weeks out in advance. Like we already know we've got media magic is our next workshop, June 5th and 6th. I'll give you guys a link in a minute um, to come join that. We know that after that comes another networking riches in August. After that comes a big three day event. We know we've got a speaker. Summit. We plan these things out so that we can start backtracking when we can start promoting it. Okay. It also forces you to be active. So Gail can't run away and go, oh my gosh, I, I just, I'm so bored. I got to go hang out with the kids and the nephews and the cousins or whatever. I can't, your calendar becomes your roadmap. And then you can start to automate some of the posting stuff on there as well. Okay. Now we got to begin. Okay. You want to be adding stuff that adds value. You eating a hot dog, ask yourself, how does that help somebody get closer to buying from you? Um, and if, it, if you can't answer that to me, what is that helping somebody make a better buying decision? If the answer is, I don't know why, don't post it, right? So for example, um, I have a lot of people that send brownies out through the mail. I found out one of my comp competitors claims they ran out of brownies. So what did I do today? I put a, a picture up there and said, hey, we've got brownies. And I've got 14 day free trials. If you want, or somebody that's, that your company is not allowing you to send brownies, hey, come check us out for 14 days, send some brownies. When your company may or may not get brownies back, when they do, you can bounce back over there. That's adding value. I'm sincerely helping somebody. Now, do I make a couple of bucks if they send some brownies? Yes, but that's not the, the driver of that. I'm trying to add value. We've got a group of people that use a product that's out of stock. I can step in and say, hey, if sending brownies to people is really important to your business, um, then I've got an alternative for you for the next couple of weeks while your company tries to figure things out. Okay. So I'm just always looking to add value. You know, I like posting tips and hacks and things that help people either make more money or save time in their business. Okay. Your post should um, be thinking about things in a new way, give them some reasons to take action, make them laugh or a smile. Maybe they can even learn something valuable, right? And sometimes it can be, um, sometimes it doesn't, it doesn't all have to be businessy. Like this morning, I found a really cool post that was a really, really cool idea for people that lose a pet. And it was being able to take the pet's dog bowl and their collar and make a little cool planter out of it. Well, why is that important? Why does that add value? Because a lot of the business owners that I work with have animals, they have pets, Right? So I got a lot of people that engaged me with that. I was like, oh, that's a really cool idea. Now, secretly, you guys, I work with a company that can create dog bowls if we need to. Right? So it's, it is, it's a way of going, hey, I just want to make people add, add value, get them engaged um, in the social media. Okay? Once you start doing this and you start scoring your social media, you guys, and you start keeping track of what, what people are engaging with, now you can start to go, oh, you know what? When I post about um, German shepherds, I only score posts and they only get it between a five and a seven. But when I post about the movie Wall Street, um, I, my post score goes up to 20 to 30. Well, what does that tell me? All things being held constant, German shepherds out, Charlie Sheen in, right? By the way, just in case you're curious, uh, Wall Street's my favorite movie. Uh, Charlie Sheen, actually, it's a whole long story. I've been friends with him for years. Uh, this picture he created for me on the set of a show he was doing uh, because for Christmas one year, he gave me a suit that he wore in the movie Wall Street. And um, so anyways, I love a fair with Wall Street. But anyway, when I post about Wall Street and Charlie Sheen, people get excited because they want to know about him. They want to know what he's like, blah, 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 blah. German Shepherds, not so much, at least for me. Okay. You can post quotes and tips and tutorial videos, live videos, pictures that are going to motivate uh, motivate your audience. Okay. I'm assuming you guys are writing some of this down. So let's say, for example, you're a health and wellness coach. Okay. If you're a health and wellness coach, um, you can be asking things like, are you asking uh, your audience members about things that are kind of healthy? Like if you're a health and wellness coach and you are posting about brownies, that's, I mean, look, I guess we could make a funny joke and say, Hey, I'm going to help you with your before picture and then hire me and I'll help get you in your after picture. Like, I guess you could make that kind of funny post around it, right? But I really wouldn't be posting about sugary. I wouldn't be showing pictures of you stuffing your face with pizza, 
um, places. But if you're a health and wellness coach, hey, drink more water. Hey, like I just got some water pitcher that that allows me to take tap water and turn it into like like micro, micro microbiotic alkaline water. I don't even know what it does. I just call it magic water, right? Um, but I got that off of a social media post, kind of a weirdo that way. Okay, experiment. You got to have a little bit of fun, but but all if you experiment with just a little bit more business mind than what you have right now, you can't uh, you can't uh, you can't help but but be better, right? So. I know all of this sounds like daunting task, right? But at the end of the day, if you were to just spend 10 or 15 minutes posting and researching posts and posting, then going down your rabbit hole, you're far better off than what your competitors are, which is not, a, not, doing, a lot, not doing a ton of it, okay? We've got to engage. We talked a little bit about that. Engage with the people that follow you. Like, look, I don't ever... My view is this. If somebody is willing to give me the opportunity to engage with me, I want to honor that, right? Like it is not lost on me for one nanosecond that every one of you guys that are watching this video or that are on this webinar, I, I try, Ryan tries, we try, Bruce tries, the people around us all try to make it valuable so that it is not a waste of your time, right? And that is so critical because the most valuable commodity anybody has is time. And if we are not engaging with our followers and we're not engaging with the people that raised their hand and said, hey, I want to learn more about how to fly fish. I want to learn more about how to uh, lose weight or I want to learn more about how to do podcasting or I want to learn more about how to send brownies or I want to learn more about how to grow my business or I want to learn more about affiliate marketing. If somebody raises their hand and says, hey, I'm interested and then you're like, oh, I can't be bothered to respond to you because I'm too busy, um, you know, going down a rabbit hole and posting on all of Bruce Waterman's Tito's Tacos posts. Now, he doesn't really post about Tito's Tacos. Right? He's right here on my screen, so I have to bring that up, right? Engage, engage, engage. Social media is a conversation. It's called social media. It is not called post and ignore media. There is a social element um, to it, okay? Conversations are key. You know, Ryan and I talk all the time and it's like, look, if we're not on the phone, if we're not engaging in conversation, we're not serving our customers. If we're not serving our customers, you know what we're called? Broke. It's not a one-way street. Here's the thing. We've all seen the, the, I mean, this makes me sick to my stomach, but we've all seen the videos of people that have gone and rented a helicopter or rented a Lamborghini or worse yet, I've even seen videos of people that claim Lamborghinis are theirs. But I happen to just know because I live the, down the street from a Lamborghini dealership that people have taken video cameras into a Lamborghini dealership and shot videos with them pretending that the Lambo is theirs. We've all seen that. You do have to be authentic. You do have to be authentic. Like, look, you know, I'm pretty much, I'm, I, several of you on here are, are close to me. You know me very well. At the end of the day, I'm the same guy standing here as I kind of am in front of 20,000 people. I'm just louder there, right? But I'm still pretty authentic. I'm pretty opinionated. I come at it from a very specific point of view. That's just my, that's, that's who I am, right? I just have a lot of experience with a lot of different businesses. So I come with a vast um, book of experiences. You be authentic to whatever makes your business unique to you. That's what's critically important. Authenticity is attractive. Now, I am. I would. I will throw this in here just for just for good measure. And um, I could be swayed off of this. I do have an opinion on this um, from a business point of view. There is a difference between being authentic and overly authentic. And when I mean overly authentic, if you're pissed off, stay off social media. I know you're authentically pissed, but nobody wants to work with somebody that's pissed, right? If you're negative Nelly, um, go be negative Nelly on your own time, not when you're in front of potential customers, okay? Um, we talked a little bit about this. The more engagement, engagement your posts have, the more it's gonna be seen. So. Um, 
I know um, I don't want to go too much further, but I will say this, that if you have no likes, comments, or shares on any of your posts, you're not being seen anywhere. The more engagement you have on your posts, the more likelihood that Facebook is going to show your content or LinkedIn is going to show your content in its newsfeed to other people that you are connected. That's why you see the same people in your newsfeed all the time because you are interacting with them. Facebook's algorithm goes, oh, Marcy Green is interacting with me all the time. Give me more Marcy Green from C Green Financial. If you need business funding, you got to connect with Marcy Green, right? So um, that's how these algorithms work. If That's why it's so important to get rid of people that are not interacting with you, bring in people that are interacting, score your social media posts, and now all of a sudden you're starting to get that flywheel of engagement happening. Talk, converse, answer questions, respond to problems. Like for us in our Platinum Inner Circle, 99% of the potential problems we have are handled through social media. Somebody has a problem, they, they can contact me either via text or social media. Half of it comes through Facebook Messenger. It, it allows you to instantaneously get um, problems solved. Your goal is to build relationships with your potential customers, okay? And you can create conversations, ask questions. Now, here's the thing. Many of you uh, that work with me privately, you hear me talk about this. Um, at the end of the day, the easy way to create engagement is go back to all your posts from yesterday and respond to everybody that was kind enough to leave you a comment. But here's the kicker. Comment back, but ask a question. What is that gonna do? It's gonna make sure they get brought back and they're gonna answer your question. They answer that question, you come back and ask them another question. That shows engagement, it builds conversation, and then, then you can take them into a messenger and ultimately onto a Zoom or a sales page or whatever. Do live videos, um, comment, make statements that'll get people talking, but be real and authentic. Follow the right people. Oh yeah, yeah. This I could go down. I could talk about this for three hours. We all have heard the. We have all heard the phrase. You you are the sum of the five people you hang around. Um, find the industry people that are the top quality value providers in your particular industry or profession, and get close to them. Okay. Join groups that are related to your industry. This is our big call to action. This is the big reveal. Um, come join our Facebook group. Many of you are part of the Expand the Business Facebook group. You can go to Join ETB. It stands for Expand the Business. Um, and uh, we'd love to have you join us in our Facebook page. So that's a writer downer. Ryan, if you would throw that in, uh, throw that in the chat, that would be awesome. Okay. And then um, take note of what other people are sharing. Okay. What gets the most response? I have, I have two friends, um, and it's actually really funny. I have two friends that we only have about nine or 10 Facebook friends in common, but I go on their profile every day. I scroll back a little bit and I see what gets them the most responses. And then I go almost post identical on my Facebook profile um, because they have great content. And so I can change it up. I can mix it up a little bit. And uh, it's also what gets a lot of engagement on our pages as well. Okay. Uh, hashtags. Uh, this is a super easy one. Um, hashtag is just a way to search content um, and it's used the pound sign. Okay. So it's just the pound sign right before them. And these are for the for these are a couple of the hashtags that we use. Hashtag expand the business, hashtag networking riches. It's a workshop that we do where we teach people the skill and the fundamental skill set of networking. Uh, we threw this in here for, for fun, Ryan and I were just goofing around. You do hashtag first time with Ryan and Casey. Hashtag mega meetup mixer. So you could screenshot this, post it on social media tag Ryan, tag me, and then put hashtag first time with Ryan and Casey. Like that would be really funny. And then people could click on that and they could see all the other posts of people that say first time with Ryan and Casey. No, there's not going to be a lot. <laughs> you don't have to do that. Nobody's really hashtagging that. We throw that in there just for example here. Okay. It's a way of grouping things by topic um, in expand the business, the Facebook group. We use hashtags to start sorting content by particular topic. So if I'm talking about, for example, cryptocurrency, I'll use hashtag crypto. That way somebody can click on that and they can see all the posts inside that group that we've done 
uh, on crypto. Okay. Twitter, same thing. Uh, Twitter is a huge thing. Uh, I mean, it can get a little outrageous. Um, jokingly, before we started the recording on this, um, Stephanie Kanan is on, on here and she runs Oasis Palisades, um, which is a health and wellness spa here in Los Angeles. She um, loves the hashtag, hashtag fangirl for Casey. So if you were to go Google or go on Facebook or Twitter and type in hashtag fangirl for Casey and click on it, you're going to see all the people that wrote that in a hashtag. It will all be Stephanie. She gets a check every month from me. It's, she's amazing, right? Um, okay. The power is that it allows you to put yourself in front of a broader audience. Um, I will tell you, I started using hashtags in YouTube of all places. And our views literally started going up within 24 hours. Okay. How do you use hashtags? Um, this is, we just did a fake post here. Had a great time tonight at Expand the Business. Gr uh, expand the Business is growing your business using social media. That's the name of tonight's event. And then we did hashtag Meetup Mixer, hashtag Expand the Business. That would be a great little post. And then you could post a picture or whatever, right? Um, uh, you could turn people away if you use the wrong hashtags. Uh, that's pretty, uh, pretty easy. So let's experiment. Different types of content are going to resonate with your audience differently. We told, talked a little bit about that. You also want to create different content because these social media platforms are changing all the time, right? I can remember when LinkedIn, you couldn't post a video. I remember on LinkedIn where it was really like just words. You couldn't do even pictures, right? Marcy Green is our resident LinkedIn expert. She's even nodding her head. She remembers those days too. These, these platforms are changing constantly, right? And here's the thing, you guys, we rent space on their platform. Please don't ever think that you own anything you post on social media. It's gone. They're tracking you. The government is tracking you. If they're not tracking you in your vaccine, they are tracking you because of social media. Oh, that was my little political jump there for a second. Um, be, <laughs> be constantly testing. Uh, I actually learned this from Ryan. Um, uh, Ryan always forces me and us, uh, our entire team, to always be testing. I'm the one that's like, ah, we got this. We know what the deal is. And Ryan's like, Let's run a test. Let's run a test. Let's run a test. What many people don't know is even if you're part of our meetup groups and you get 18 trillion emails from us, um, every one of those was tracked. So we know, did you join this group? Uh, did you join tonight because you saw this on an email that came out as a reminder? Or did you join because you, it was actually set up as a meetup itself? Or did you join because of Eventbrite? Or did you join because you were part of Expand the Business? Everything we're doing is keeping track and so we can test so we can better serve uh, those customers. Okay. Now, are you using social media? The advantage is we, don't, we already know this is not complicated to get started. Don't be intimidated. It's just a it's, look, everybody sucks when they first start. That's the good news. The better news is most people continue to suck without any testing or consistency or putting any thought or anything into it. That's the awesome news. Okay. So, don't wait any longer. There are people out there that will buy your product, good, or service if you let them. Try not to turn people off. Ay, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so look, come play inside our, our Expand the Business Facebook group. Uh, it's a great community. It's free. You don't like it? Get out. It's super easy to get out. You just click leave group, right? We don't have people leave the group because it's a really, really active group and a really active community. Deborah Thorne posts in there. If you're familiar with Deborah Thorne, um, she posts in inside there uh, a lot, uh, and she always provides awesome value. And she's growing her network by just participating in there. You can do an introduction in there. Go. So this is just a little strategy. Go comment on five posts that are in that Facebook group, and then come join us on our weekly Thursday networking event. We'd love we would love to have you. Now here's the thing. We have, uh, we have a, um, an event coming up June 5th and 6th that we'd love to have you, uh, we'd love to have you be a part of, um, and you can just come join us for free at marketingeventsonline.com. We normally charge 47 bucks for it. Um, come join us. It's 47. It's not 47. It's free. It's June 5th and 6th. Um, because you joined here, it's free. Uh, we're going to do two days. We're going to do one day on using videos and how to create powerful video content and interviews. And then the second day, we're going to talk all about presentation and presenting and how to do um, live presentations, online presentations, 
Uh, it's going to have lots of interaction. You're going to meet a lot of really cool people. You're going to literally be given a roadmap from A to Z and how to grow your business using video interviews and presentations. And just as a little side note, most people won't catch this, but this is how nerdy uh, Ryan is with us when we build stuff. We like to treat everybody like a VIP, video, interview, and presentations. Get it? V-I-P? That's our, that's our, <laughs> that's, that's our, that's our little insider, insider little deal. So we'd love to have you be, uh, to be a part of that. And uh, that's really kind of, uh, kind of the racket, you guys. So what I want to be able